I say, you're half rough on your socks. Uh, yes, well, I, I do a lot of walking, you know. What's this, then? London to Brighton? Uh, uh, <coughs> yes, it has gone a bit far, hasn't it, Hattie Petal? So if it's too much trouble... Oh, no, it's no trouble at all, Lars. I like darning, you know. I like knitting and sewing, too, anything like that. It sort of takes your mind off it. Off what? Well, <laughs> off it. Being lonely, you know, and getting the screaming ump. <laughs> Mine is a somewhat solitary existence, you know. It's funny you should like walking. I like walking. <laughs> Do you really? Well, we must... Uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I mean, I'm uh, not doing nothing this evening, like. We could go for a bit of a stroll. Uh, a bit of a... Uh, uh, oh, ah, ah. What's the matter? It's nothing, Hetty. It's just my old war wound playing me up a little oh, bit. Oh, dear. You can't walk far on a bad leg, can you? Well, nothing much to do, really. Well, that's what I, I, I was thinking. Well, that's what 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 I was thinking. Well, Look, if you don't want my company, why don't you just say so? Oh, well, Hetty, whatever gave you that idea, of course I want your company. It's, it's, it's All just... All right, then you think of something. Oh, no, no, it's your privilege. All right. Let's just stay in and watch the telly. Uh, well... Or are you sickening for claustrophobia? <laughs> oh, no, no, Hetty, nothing like that. It's just... Oh, it's just I have to go out this evening, you see, so if you'll excuse me, I think I'll just run along fresh. But it's only half past three. Uh, 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 yes, well, it doesn't do to leave everything to the last minute, does it? Right, then you can take that with you. Uh, ah. <laughs> Some other evening, perhaps. <coughs> ah, Miss Dasbert! What's he done now, then? Nothing. But it's the nasty, crafty way he never done it. Oh, I see. Well, I brought you both a cup of tea. Never mind. Here's yours. Oh. Oh, well, time to get back on the treadmill, I suppose. No, Etty, you take your time. We'll let Alf manage out there for a bit on his own. It's good for his ego. Good for his what? Good for about two minutes until something crops up he can't handle. <laughs> Here, radar. Right there are. See what I mean? Here, there's a geese or... There's a geezer out in the cab. Oh, Alf, can't you even serve a customer without holding a three-power conference? Will you listen? This is no customer. This is a little ferrety-faced fellow with a bowler hat and he's asking questions. Questions? What kind of questions? Well, I don't know. None he's asked so far have made any sense. But he's got legal proceedings written all over him and he's looking for someone. <laughs> Must you make a full-scale drama out of everything? Who's he looking for? I don't know. Have you ever heard of a Henrietta Foskett? <laughs> Me. Your name is Etty Pratt. Won't you turn it no, up? No, no, Foskett was my single name. And I've always kept quiet about the Henrietta. Hide me. Hide me. Etty, come out of there. What do you want to yourself for? You've done nothing wrong. Have you? Yeah. Oh, that is no. No, not recently. Oh, oh Alf, is he a copper? Oh, I don't know, girl. Oh, it's a little pity your murky past getting oh. up with you, isn't it, girl? Oh, Alf, do leave off. Can't you see she's upset? Oh, oh. Eddie, pull oh. yourself together, dear. Oh. We'll go out there and handle this fellow, whoever No! Else. Send him away. I don't wish to see him. Alf. Yes, girl. Tell him I'm not here. Tell him I'm dead. Tell him you never even heard of me. Right. <laughs> Wit. Oh, no, is that? Oh, Auntie, no. pull yourself together. Sit down, dear. Now, go and bring him in. Right. No. Yes, go on. Oh, the shame. Oh, no, Auntie, don't worry, girl. I mean, whatever you've done, no matter how bad, Ada and I will stand by you through thick and thin. Oh. I suppose. Of course we will. Go and fetch him in here, Al. Oh, Auntie, calm yeah, yourself. In here. Miss Henrietta Foskett, or is it Mrs. Prout? I refuse to answer on the grounds it may incriminate me. <laughs> this is Mrs. Hetty Prout, and what is that to you? Ah, so I found you at last. 
You've led me a pretty dance, Mrs. Prout, but I finally tracked you down. Don't you talk like that to her. That's intimidation. Yes, besides... No, 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 no. Etty, don't you say a word. She doesn't have to say anything until her lawyer gets here. I watch the telly, you know. Indeed? And who are you? <laughs> My name's Smith. <laughs> Our name is Larkins. And we're very good friends of this dear lady's here. Now, would you mind telling us who you are? Certainly, madam. I represent Arkwright, Duckworth, Son and Weaver, solicitors. My card. Solicitors? I knew it. It's the eye of purchase. So that's who you are. A knock from the never. Wow, leave all. Solicitor, well, you better sit down. Sit down, Etty. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. <laughs> no, Mrs. Crouch. Now, just a minute, Mr. Um, here, which one are you? Ah, uh, right, Duckworth, son or Weaver. Ah, don't tell me. You're Duckworth. No, 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 he's not. No, he's not. He's Weaver. He's got a sort of weaverly look, hasn't he? My name is Crisp. Crisp? <laughs> Why, he's not even down here. Madam, I'm not one of the partners. I'm Mr. Duckworth's clerk. Oh, now, well, Mr. I Clark... think that that is a shame. Why aren't you a partner, then? Oh, really, madam, the situation has never arisen. Yeah, well, you should have made it arise. Yes, mate. I bet they're deliberately holding him back. You bet your life. Yeah. Oh, right, Duckworth's son and Weaver. Well, he don't stand a chance with a mob like that, does he? No, clicky. Yes, dead clicky. Uh, Mrs. Prout. Yes, I mean, you've only got to look at this card to see the old setup. I mean, Arkwright, for instance. Old, crotchety past it, am I right? Mr. Arkwright died in 1932. Yeah, yeah, well, he's well past it, isn't he? <laughs> Nice enough, fella, but set in his way. Yes, and what about that crafty son then? Straight out of law school, nips in over your head. And Weaver. Yeah, well, he's a mate of young Duckworth, of course, who pulls a few strings for him, who works him in. Do you know what you are, mate? You are a victim of nepotism. If you don't mind, I did not come here to discuss my career. Oh, but you should have. Yes, and we'll help you all we can. Mm. Well, you're not helping by trying to cloud the issue. My business is with Mrs. Prout. Now, please, will you leave us alone together? No! Not on your nilly, mate. Never. Whatever you've got to say to her, you've got to say in front of us. Is this your wish, madam? Yeah, it is. Very well. Here you are. Have a seat. Oh. Henrietta Prout, nay Foskett, madam. I'll deny it. That rotten steam iron never worked properly in the first place. I've got scars all over me to prove it. Yes, yeah, she has. <laughs> and if you sue her for non-payment in the instalments, we'll count as super dangerous negligence. You go back and tell that to Artworth, duck right, son, and flippity push. <laughs> <laughs> really, madam? Yeah, it's too true, isn't it, mate? Deadlock, she's got you like that. Of course, I know there was that three-piece suite, but I had to flog that to make a down payment on... That day! Tell him! No, well, you, you'll be wanting to move along then, won't you? Will you please leave me alone? Now, Mrs. Proud, my business with you has nothing to do with hire purchase. Hey? Betty, whatever else have you been up to? Nothing! Well, nothing they could sue me for. What do you want to see me about, then? Well, we've been trying to contact you for some time. We've written you several letters to various addresses, but you all seem to have moved on. I know. I find it very hard to settle. So I gather. Now then, uh, You've been advertising, have you? Yes, I have in all the papers. Times, Telegraph, Guardian. Oh, oh. if you wanted to get out of her, you should have sent one in the Passion Weekly, as all she reads. <laughs> you may recall I get little time for reading. All right, Tosh. You've contacted her. Now what? Well, uh, we are executors to the will of the late Ambrose Foskett, your great uncle, I believe. That's right. I didn't know. I mean, I hardly knew him. How much? Oh, don't be so coarse, how she just lost her great uncle Ambrose. How much? Mrs. Prout, you have been made a beneficiary. Is that good? Oh, very good, I should say. You've inherited a tidy little sum. A tidy little sum? How, how much? much? Well, I should say in the region of uh, 6,500 pounds. <laughs> Hello, Lofty. Got a nice steady job there, Al. Yes. 
Very funny. Well, I mean, we're short-handed, aren't we? Has Hetty packed it in for good, then? For good? Well, if you'd won six and a half thousand, Nicker, wouldn't you? Yeah. So she got the money, then? Oh, yes, yeah, she got the money, Henry. Here, here, boys. I've been meaning to ask you, have you ever thought of joining the voluntary home help service? Not likely, man. Ah, no, Alf. We haven't got your lovely touch with the brush like. Here, Shamrock. Look, I might be Irish, but I'm not green. <laughs> <laughs> all right, break it up, all of you inside. Oh, Alf, never mind the work. Come and sit down. I want to have a serious talk to you about Etty. Yeah. She's still out, then? Out. She's never in these days, Alf. Mind you, I don't blame her, but... No, well, I don't blame her either. Mind you, I don't know why she goes on living round here. If I had that sort of loot, I'd be off of here like a flesh. You would. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd take you with me, of course. Of course. But we're not talking about you, we're talking about Etty. And I tell you straight out, I'm worried. And so am I, girl. I'm getting dishpan hands. Oh, do leave off thinking about yourself. It's Etty I'm worried about. I mean, she's not used to money, then. Woo! Out of the blue. 6,500 quid. Yeah, that takes some getting used to, doesn't it? Mind you, she's doing her best. I'll give her that. Yes, I know, and that's what worries me. And if somebody doesn't watch out for her, else she'll run through the lot. Or somebody is going to do it for her. Oh, yes. We haven't seen a lot of him lately around here either, have we? No, we haven't. I mean, I wouldn't want to say nothing bad about Osbert, but... Yeah, but we will, though, won't we? Ever since she's copped that lolly, he honestly hasn't taken his eyes off her. And yet he's so impressionable. Yeah, she is. Yeah, well, as I see it, we've got to save her from herself. I mean, we've got to talk sense to her. That's our duty. That's what friends are for. She'll be all right, Alf, as long as she don't lose her sense of proportion. And it turned hot and fair sweltering. Not surprised under that lot. Where have you been then? Up the zoo? <laughs> now I've been shopping. Come in, Alf. Come on, mother. Oh, forward, forward. Wait a minute now. Left a bit, left. Forward again. Carefully. And down. There you are. Hello. Oh, hello. hello. Uh, I, I, I've just been giving Hetty a helping... Uh, uh, um, I just got to uh, freshen up a bit. I think. <laughs> He's been helping you to spend all your money, I suppose. No, he hasn't. But then I don't need no help to do that, believe you me. Uh, wouldn't there be a chair? Oh, yes, see you are, I mean, Thank you down. so much. <laughs> oh, wait. It's a marvellous feeling. Just think you can go out and buy anything you fancy. Oh, I do wish you'd been with us and me. We had a marvellous time. I nearly bought half of Bond Street. <laughs> but then, I mean, what's money for? If you can't spend it, say I. <laughs> Hattie, that is entirely the wrong attitude. Entirely wrong, Hattie, and I'm sorry to have to speak plain, Hattie, but you've got to watch that Osbert. But he's been most helpful. He's given me all sorts of advice. Oh, Etty, that's what we're afraid of. No, Etty, mate, six and a half thousand quid. That is a lot of money. Oh, that don't worry us. He can think big. Etty. No, Ada, Ada, I think the time has come. Yes. Now, Etty, I suppose... I know Osbert better than anybody else. Oh, I don't know. No, Etty. No, Ada, I really think this would come better from me. Yes, Alf, I suppose you're right. Well... See what you can do. Now go and make us a nice cup of tea. Oh, not for me, Jack. I've been on Bloody Mary's all morning. <laughs> now, Etty, I want to talk to you very serious. Oh, all right. Here, what do you think of my hat? Yeah, it's a Love very it. nice hat. Now, Etty. <laughs> Osbert chose this, you know. Yes. Yeah. Now, about Osbert. Don't you say nothing nasty about my Osbert. No, well, I wouldn't, Etty. Now, would I? Yes. Old Oz, my mate, the fine fellow, one of the best. So he is. Yes, I agree. Yes. But? But? Financially? Eh? Unsound. What? Now, Etty, don't, don't fritter your money away on any of Osbert's mad schemes. Fritter? No, no, Etty, don't argue. Trust me, mate. Now... What you want to do with your money? 
is to invest it. Invest it? Yes, let it multiply. Etty, find yourself a gilt-edged proposition. Gilt-edged? Yes, and I am able to offer you something rock solid reliable. Reliable? A betting shop. A Yes, with your six and a half thousand nicker and my racing genius, Bosch. Oh, before you look round, Etty, we could have a chain. What good's a rotten chain? A chain of betting shops, Etty. Now, 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 do you just think it over, girl? And I wouldn't say anything to Oz because you'll only sort of gum it up. And, and, Etty, I don't think that there's any real need to mention this to Ada, either. What's that about, Ada? No, uh, <laughs> Well, uh, nothing. No, no, I was just putting her right about Osbert. So you was just putting her right about Osbert? Yes, I was. And now I'm going to put her right about you. For me? Yes, you. I suppose he's been giving you some wildcat scheme to lose your money on. Well, he did mention something about a betting shop with gilt edges. No, I thought so. You never agreed to nothing, did you? No, no. I should hope not. You let him more Osbert near your money and you might as well throw it down the sink. <laughs> Uh, how do I look? Oh, how do you look? <laughs> Exquisite, mate. <laughs> I reckon you look like something off the top of a Christmas tree. Would you mind telling us what all this is in aid of? Uh, well, Hetty and I are stepping out. Yes, we're going to a nightclub. <laughs> a nightclub. Very exclusive nightclub. But that don't matter. You can come too. No, thank you very much. No, thank you. Oh, yes, you must come. I want you to be there. Why do you want us to be there? Well, <laughs> it was going to be a sort of big surprise, but, um, go on, you tell them, Mars. <laughs> well, the proprietor is a great friend of mine, and if Hetty plays her cards right, she mm -hmm. may be able to buy a half share. For 6,500 quid. <laughs> <laughs> very big, is it? The nightclub is so there, you fool. Oh. Good evening, Bubble. Good evening, Major. Oh, it's the Major bit up here, is it? Oh, oh good evening, Bubble. Good evening, sir. How uncouth can you get? No, I'm not really trying yet. <coughs> I wish I hadn't come. Yeah, well, I wish I hadn't come in the first place, mate. I didn't want you to come either, since Hetty invited Good evening. Since Hetty invited you, might at least have the good grace to behave yourself. Take your hat off. Ah, here are the ladies now. You might have waited. I caught my rotten heel in the door, Matt. Good race. Do you care to leave your cloaks? No, thank you. No, thank you. I haven't splashed out on this to go and have it lumped in some cloakroom. Here, what do you think of it? Well, I don't like the look of her for a start. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she's called Bubbles. Yes, I'm not surprised. She looks as though she's been blown into that costume. <laughs> oh, leave her alone, do. I'm on the threshold, drinking it all in. It's like a dream come true and I feel wonderful. Yeah, well, are we going in or do they bring the noshard here to us? <laughs> Waiting for my friend to arrive. Ah, oh, here he is now, Henry. Osbert, my good friend. May I introduce some very good friends of mine, Ada, Alf, and the little lady I was telling you about, Hetty. Enchanté, madame. Oh, I say, I do love Frenchmen. <laughs> Viva Bouche and up the Allies. <laughs> Very good friend of mine, Herr Heinrich Müller. At your eternal service. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll go find you a table. 
Well, you started that off on the right foot, didn't you? Well, him and his enchanté. I thought he was a Frenchman. No, no, he's no frog. He's a kraut. Alfred, keep your voice down. Yes, well, he's a kraut. I mean, if he was right, if a bloke talks frog, he's a frog. If he talks kraut, he's a kraut. When you get a, a kraut talking frog, I mean, where are you? Lawyer? Out on your ear if you're not careful. He's right behind you. <laughs> Pierre will find you a table. This way, monsieur. Shall we go along, then? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you later, then. Later. Kill that! It's a Tuesday night, we come to our power cut. I do we do it almost like this. No, no wonder they want your money here, because they can't even pay the electric bill. <laughs> Peter, please. Well, I mean candles, it's pathetic. Ah, oh, where are you? Oh, yeah, oh, oh, I'm here. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, you proper dark old old this is, isn't it, mate? Oh, don't show us up. Come over here. Yeah, right. This way, madame. <laughs> Last. I want to sit next to Etty. Oh, Ada must talk. Yes. Oh, go on, let her sit next to me if she wants to sit next to me. She's my best friend. Oh, all right, all right. We'll do it and get it done with people are looking. Well, let them look a fat lot they're seeing this light. <laughs> Come on, move <laughs> over. Oh, I've only just got comfortable. Now, Fred! Move it! <laughs> <laughs> Anything to drink, monsieur? Champagne, four. Four glasses? No, four bottles. If you make a beast of yourself, you're not walking home with me. Oh, come on, girl, enjoy yourself. Well, now, what are we going to have to eat? It looks a delicious menu. Well, be all right if you can see it. It wouldn't make much difference if you could. It's all in frog. <laughs> Champagne, monsieur? Yeah, thank you, Tosh. <laughs> Yeah, well, carry on. <laughs> Champagne, eh? This is the life. <laughs> My first one today. Except for all them bloody men. <laughs> Ta oh! Oh! Tastes like lemonade. Except the lemonade's got more kick. All right, son, over here. Do it again. <laughs> now, uh, what do we get to order? How can we order when we don't know what it is? Oh, would you like to leave it to me? Oh, yeah, I should do it, Dad. Right. Uh, I think to start with, we'll have uh, Mélé Mélé de Fruits Refreshies au Grand Manier. Uh, and then we'll have Supreme de Turbotine Valesca. Uh, and then I think we'll have Entrecote Gré à la Moelle with uh, Endive Gratiné à la Flamande, Palm au Four. Then I think we'll have Duchesse au Praliné, a uh, bottle of Chateau Neuf to Pep. And I think we'll round it all off with a Courvoisier. Oui, monsieur. Madame? I'll have the same with chips. <laughs> Madame? I'm not angry. <laughs> Monsieur? Uh, no more. Oh, well, if you're not eating nothing, neither will I then. Nine, merci bon. Just the champagne. Are you alone, Monsieur? Uh, no, no, we'll, we'll order data. More champagne. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Well, if this is your mad gay nightlife, give me a cup of cocoa and my bed socks. <laughs> Honestly, if you put any money in this joint, Teddy, I'll have you certified. I mean, look at them. They're all half dead. <laughs> yes, well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll go and have a word with my old friend Heinrich. <laughs> Peace off. Oh. Well, don't just stand there, Doc. Open another bottle. Oui, madame. Heinrich, my old friend, how are you? Osbert, you've been friends for a long time, yeah? Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely, old champion. Then I speak frankly. This is an exclusive club. We cater for the best people. I do not think your lady friend fit in. Oh, she does. I mean, she will. I mean, have her groomed, taught elocution, the whole Pygmalion box of tricks. I don't know. She has the money, Heinrich, in cash. <sighs> I have to think about it. Yes, you do that, old lad. Look, uh, how are the old war memoirs coming along? All the memoirs? I've just finished my analysis of the second Ooh, book. Oh, how is she? Do sit up and behave yourself. Go and fetch Osbert. Well, uh, you keep going on at me. Well, I should think so, showing us up like this. Well, don't keep going on at me. It's my rotten party. <laughs> <laughs> Daphne! Daphne! 
treated two pencil divisions on the eastern escarpment. The enemy was sadly under strength. Oh, no, that's where you're very wrong, old boy, because we brought up three divisions right through to there. Yes, but we bring up one more division. Yeah, well, don't stop. I mean, it's very interesting. Oh, my dear, what an absolute crashing war. But then, of course, all these house parties are the same, aren't they? I mean, one meets the same boring people, you know, cabinet ministers, television personalities. My dear, Charles dragged me to the pits up, John. My dear, it was frightful. Until Adrian turned up, I was nearly driven out of my tiny mind. She's driving me out of my mind, I know that. <laughs> you know what? Well, I'm going to slush her in a minute. <laughs> We bridged the river here and pushed our spearhead right through to there. Yes, but we threw a pincer around your spearhead there and there and kaput. No, 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 no. I beg your pardon? Yeah, well, I was there, wasn't I? On this hill. Well, I said to Monty, I said, I said, what are you going to do now, Monty? He said, I'm going to handle, leave you to handle this one. He said, oh, I'm off home to start me memoirs. <laughs> so there I was, on this hill, on my tod, on this horse. One brass-bound cannon facing me by the old panzer divisions. Well, I give myself the order, and I go down that hill like a dose of salts. <laughs> one Mark V cannonball, and it was all over. <coughs> bosh, 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 bosh. You called me boss! Oh, hang again. Yeah. Oh, darling, I mean, what can you expect? I mean, no one who is anyone comes here these days. I mean, the whole place is just going down and down. I mean, they seem to admit just anyone oh. these days. I mean, look at the time. No, I believe it or not, I do. Andy, look! Oh, they come after all. Oh. Well, I'm going to go to your head, dude. Ah, it's just like home. Right, love, I'll have a chip butty and a dollar oh. for scouts. And, and don't mind about the beer. We brought our own. Oh. Yeah, we're not paying that fancy clip joint prices. Right, love. Oh, how perfectly disgusting. Good heavens. Well, of course, now I've seen everything, but everything. You'll see the back of my head. Oh. Oh. I've never been so insulted. Oh, come, dear, you must have been. Oh. <laughs> This is too much. Go at once. Go. You heard what he said. Go. Oh. He doesn't mean her. He means you. Oh, go on. Right. Uh, say, Henrik, what about the partnership? That goes for you too. Yes, I gathered it did. Out. Ah. And as for you, leave this club and do not return. Out. Don't you worry. I wouldn't stop here if you paid me. No wonder everybody's leaving. Oh. <laughs> Try saying out to me. Out. Sure. <laughs> oh, my I dear Lady Borden, well, how can I apologize? I beg you to sit down. This is not your fault. You and your grasping, greedy ways trying to get hold of Eddie's money. Oh, uh, no, Ada, fair dues. What about Alfred and the betting shop? No, 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 that was different. Oh, no, it wasn't. You've both been grasping and greedy. Now, go on, admit it. All right, perhaps you're right. Yes, I know I'm right. Let this be a lesson to you. No more nasty little investments or schemes. You understand, it's Etty's money, and let her do whatever she likes with it, right? Right. Right, right then. Here, yeah, where is she? Uh, Etty! <laughs> Here, Etty, what have you been doing? My flower. Etty, what have you done? Something I have wanted to do all my life. Risked my all on the turn of a card. Your all. <laughs> You, the six thousand five. That's right, and I have lost the lot. 